This is gonna be good. Hey BJ Clean Team, it's Ryan. Welcome to my channel. This channel is all things aviation and I use my experience as a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird stunt pilot and current commercial pilot to break down awesome aviation videos and stories. And this video is gonna be epic. So stay to the very end because I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the plot of the new Top Gun Maverick that's gonna release here shortly. I'm gonna give you three key points, so stay to the end to catch all three. And before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button and hey, maybe even subscribe. And every time you do that, you keep a fighter pilot's soul from dying. <laughs> With that said, let's dive into some Top Gun. So if you remember in the first Top Gun, there's a scene when Maverick and Goose buzz the tower. And Goose is like, not a good idea, Mav. And Maverick's like, Tower, Ghost Rider requests flyby. And then there's this old salty commander in a tower with a cup of coffee. And he just seems like he doesn't like fun. He's just kind of one of those guys who's like, fun? No, we call those guys the fun police. Not cool. <laughs> so that commander is like, negative Ghost Rider, pattern is full. And Maverick's like, mm, not for me, bro. Not today. <laughs> so Maverick does that pass past the control tower. And he makes that commander spill that coffee all over himself. And that's kind of the catalyst that gets Maverick basically kicked out of that squadron. And they're like, hey, you're someone else's problem, bro. We're going to send you to Top Gun. And that kind of parallels what happens with the new trailer for Top Gun Maverick. Maverick's flying the SR-72 and he does a low pass over a building on the end of the runway. The roof of the building flies up. And to me, that's maybe the catalyst that they're like, we gotta get him out of this program. Let's get him somewhere. But at the same time, there's a high stakes mission that needs someone to lead a bunch of aviators into combat. And then Iceman from Top Gun 1, Val Kilmer, he's like, Maverick, you're my guy for the job. And on a side note, the SR-72, people are calling it the son of the Blackbird. And the reason why they're doing that is because the SR-71 was the Blackbird. But the SR-72 is like, this massive improvement. It's a hypersonic jet that can go Mach 6. So can we please, guys, can we please stop calling it the son of the Blackbird? I mean, the SR-72 is like, Dad, I want to be my own plane. The SR-71 is like, no. But I think it's time for us to get the SR-72 out of the shadow of the SR-71. Shadow. Mm. I know some people are calling it the Dark Star as well, which, yeah, I don't know. Not a huge fan. I like something like Shadow, but you guys let me know below what you think we should call the SR-72 because Son of a Blackbird just, just doesn't do it for me. It's kind of like if you call an F-16 a Fighting Falcon. It's like, no bro, it's not the Fighting Falcon. That doesn't sound cool. You gotta sound cool when you talk about jets. You gotta sound cool on the radio. These are some principles to life. That's why F-16 pilots call the F-16 the Viper because who wants to say, I fly the Fighting Falcon. Da -da -da. Anyhow, that's the catalyst, I think, in Top Gun 2 that sends Maverick back to this high-stakes mission to be the instructor. And the second point I'll share with you is there's a point in any hero's journey where they get challenged and they become committed due to some intense event. And if you see in the Top Gun trailers, you'll see that an F-18 actually has a flame out during one of the trailers. And what I think happens is Maverick is pushing these aviators to the limit and Things happen in training. Training gets intense. What I think happens is they kind of lose faith in Maverick and they don't know if they want to follow him into combat. And Maverick has to kind of show like, no, you know what? I am here for you guys. I will bring you back from combat no matter what. And then they reluctantly follow him into combat because you can see they're all sitting on the carrier getting ready to launch and they kind of, they look reluctant like a bad event has happened. And then the third thing that I saw is someone gets shot down by a surface to air missile. So these super hornets are raging around, surface to air missile, boom, knocks one of the F-18s out of the sky. And I think this is Rooster, who is Goose's son from Top Gun 1. So Maverick is even more committed to make sure that he brings Rooster back safely because of what happened to Goose in Top Gun 1. After Rooster gets shot down, there's some battle damage or something that makes Maverick's jet not able to make it back. So Maverick ends up ejecting and that's when he lands in the snow and meets up with Rooster. And actually recently there's been some pictures that have leaked out of the filming process where Maverick is in the snow, looks like he's gathering up his parachute. And at that point, what I think happens is he's gonna link up with Rooster and they're gonna make their way somehow 
to a hangar in the enemy country that has an F-14. Because there's also pictures of Maverick and Rooster sitting in an F-14. And then I think Maverick and Rooster start making their way out of that enemy country and they're intercepted by a Su-57, which is Russia's version of a fifth gen aircraft. And then a dogfight is gonna ensue between an F-14 and a Su-57. And I know what you're asking yourself. Could an F-14 be a Su-57? Yes, and I'll tell you why. The Su-57 has a ton of ability to move its nose and have high angle of attack maneuvering because of the thrust vectoring that it has. That's just a fancy way of saying that jet can literally turn itself into a speed brake and twist all around and do a lot of different maneuvering with its nose that helps it shoot weapons more effectively. But the downside of the Su-57, and if you've seen some of my reaction videos, the F-22 versus the Su-57, you can tell that the rearward visibility in the Su-57 is terrible. So at that point when the merge happens, if that Su-57 pilot is trying to look back at the F-14, there's no way they're gonna see them in my opinion. And the key to dogfighting is lose sight, lose the fight. And that's something that we would always train to was always maintaining the visual. Because that Su-57, if they lose the visual that close in, they're not gonna be able to employ those weapons. So what Maverick's probably gonna do because he's got that secret move, right? The Cobra maneuver is he's gonna to try to slam on the brakes and then have that Su-57 fly in front of him and get behind him. Now, I don't think the F-14 could do the Cobra maneuver. It could do something you know, to try to slow down, create closure. And then if that Su-57 didn't see them, it could definitely get behind them and take care of business, baby. But the F-18 can do a slight version of the Cobra Maneuver, and I actually saw this in real time when I was dogfighting one. I was dogfighting a Legacy Hornet when I saw this happen, but it was slightly descending as it was doing the maneuver, so I was able to stay behind it by controlling my closure. The F-22 can actually do a decent Cobra Maneuver, and if you've been to any air shows and seen the F-22 demo, you know what I'm talking about. It's just awesome to see that thing turn itself into a speed brake, but yeah, the Cobra, is Maverick's ace in the hole maneuver. Another thing that Maverick and Rooster would have going for them is they're gonna have way more flight time than any pilot flying the Su-57 because there's not a lot of those in existence and the Russian pilots probably get less than 10 to 20 hours per year when they're training on that thing. So let's say the couple that are flying, a pilot with 10 or 20 hours per year is basically gonna be concerned with self-preservation because everything around them in that cockpit is gonna seem foreign and the ground's gonna be moving really fast, especially with a complex maneuvering aircraft like that. Most likely they're gonna be delayed and they're gonna get surprised by a lot of things that are gonna happen. Also, a lot of Soviet aircraft are very dependent on ground control intercept. So there's people on the ground kind of telling them what to do, where to go, what to target. And when you're dogfighting, that's not going to be possible because things are going to be happening so fast. What I think will happen is Maverick and Rooster will just wail on this Su-57 and then they'll blast off into the sunset with the Top Gun anthem playing. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think below. Tell me what you think would happen in the comments. So glad you guys are here. Before you go, if you would, just dominate that like button and hey, maybe even subscribe. That'd mean a lot and help me grow this channel. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next video. Most of all, have a great day.